Playing the finals makes you feel like you're Bob the Builder's disgraced and disowned third cousin, Don the Demolitionist, because you could demolish literal entire buildings. The finals is a first-person shooter, platform game, fighting game that was developed by Embark Studios. The story is that you're a contestant on a virtual game show where you test your VR gaming skills against other contestants for fame and fortune. It's a simple story, not much to talk about here. The game is more targeting people who like team-based first-person shooters. You can play the finals on controller or mouse and keyboard. You can only play on PS5, Xbox Series X S, and Windows through Steam. The finals supports full cross-play and cross-progression across all platforms with the use of an Embark ID. And lastly, here's the menu settings. If you care about this, pause it to read. The graphics look good, the character models and animations seem lifelike, and there aren't many glaring weaknesses in terms of graphics. When buildings lose their foundation, they fall down and the physics don't look half bad. One of the only negatives is that some of the glass textures in the buildings are copy pasted, but unless you're more anal than beads, it shouldn't detract from the overall gameplay. I would say that overall, it looks really good. Not perfect though. The system requirements are also a little demanding, with the recommended card being a 2070 RTX. The sound effects are clean, gunshots sound good, and the announcers will yell commentary at you to liven the gameplay up. But for some reason, hit markers for gas damage seem louder than everything else. It's a weird bug, but it's fine. And lastly, the voiceovers are done by AI, which some people really care about. So here's what Embark had to say about that. The finals has three game modes and a ranked version of one of them. You have Quick Cash, where three teams of three compete against each other via gunfire to break open a vault, take the credits that pop out to a cash out station, which starts a cash out timer. Then everyone competes to control the station. Once the timer runs out, whoever controls the station earns the credits. First team to 20,000 wins. Yeah, you can actually steal other people's hard earned credits. It is dirty, but kind of funny. Another mode is called Bank It, where it's basically a deathmatch where you kill enemies and open vaults in order to earn credits, then take those to the cash out station. First team to get the 40,000 wins. In this mode, nobody fights for control of the cash out station. As soon as you put it in, it's yours. And lastly, there's ranked and unranked tournament modes. Obviously, in the ranked version, you get a shiny metal or rock to show off your skill. Remember, the shinier the material, the better you are. Anyways, tournament mode consists of 16 teams of 3 people who compete against each other to cash out the most cash, similar to the other game modes. However, the twist is that there are limited respawn tokens, and at the end of each 9 minute round, the two lowest scoring teams are eliminated and sent packing back to the lobby for being trash. For mechanics, you can aim down your sights and open fire. You can jump. You can sprint. You can slide. You can revive your teammates. You can use your specialization ability thing to, for example, heal your teammates. You can use different gadgets like the goo grenade, ignore gravity and use the force to pick up and fling explosive objects. And lastly, you can melee attack. You can choose the light, medium, or heavy build. All of them allow you to pick a weapon and a specialization ability, both of which are from a pool unique to each specific build. You can also select three gadgets, some of which are unique to a specific build and some of which are not. And to unlock each thing, you need to spend the in-game currency called VRs that you earn from just playing the game. The light build has high mobility and low durability and lets you use pea shooters like the Silence Pistol. Or if you're one of those edgy kids that was obsessed with Naruto in high school, you can fling some kunai. For the light build gadgets, commit an act of terror with some C4 and then use the thermal vision to help you evade the feds that come after you for said act of terror. And finally, the light build specializations, toe the line of copyright infringement with the Spider-Man ability, or how about do a little dashy boy. The medium build has a, you guessed it, medium amount of mobility and durability. With the medium build, you can bring law and order to the wild west with the model 1887 lever action shotgun. Or maybe whip out your riot shield to quell some civil unrest. Then for gadgets, you could zip line into the action like off-brand Pathfinder, or shock your teammates back to life instantly with a defibrillator. For medium specialization abilities, you could set up a turret to handle your light work, or use recon sensors to see outlines of enemies through walls. And lastly, there's the heavy build, which has of course low mobility and high durability. The heavy build allows you to use weapons that will cause a large size hole in your enemy. You have the SA-1216, which is a shotgun but thick. Or maybe instead of a large hole, you rather turn them into a fine red mist with the grenade launcher. Heavy gadgets include the dome shield, which you can hide in and be a little weenie. Or what about just the rocket launcher? Yep, this game calls a rocket launcher a gadget. So next time you get pulled over with your RPG in the car and a cop asks if you have any weapons, just say you have a gadget or two and he'll leave you alone no problem. 
Heavy specialization abilities include the Mesh Shield, which is kind of a blatant ripoff of Reinhardt's shield, with a shitty stanky leg-esque walking animation. And there's the Goo Gun, which shoots goo that acts like a solid entity, allowing you to take cover, climb it, or block off choke points. However, it can be destroyed by any fire-based weaponry, which is a pretty unique mechanic, I must say. Now let's talk multiplayer. The whole game is PvP. There's no campaign or PvE. As for the maps, there are maps based on real-life places, such as Las Vegas, Seoul, and Monaco. There are only four maps currently, but they're big as hell and offer the player ample opportunities to hide on roofs, snipe, or whatever else their little heart desires. Maps also have weather conditions and time that changes how it looks. For example, there is fog that makes everything, well, foggy. You could have a map during the day or even at night. You can join games via normal matchmaking or just join slash invite your friends. Unfortunately, as of right now, there are no custom lobbies that you can join. Lastly, to communicate with the goofs that pass off as your teammates, you can use voice chat. There is no text chat, at least not on Xbox. There is no pay to win, but there is of course a battle pass, which seems to be okay as the game is free. For cosmetics, there are loads of options, ranging from skins, charms, stickers, for your weapons, and for your character. You could choose between different clothes, hair, skin tone, emotes, etc. If you wanted a cat or a bird on your shoulder, you can have that too. Some glitches and annoying gameplay I've encountered was the holding my gun like a dumbass glitch. This only happened to me in practice, but it would be hell annoying if it happened in the game. When buildings get destroyed, the debris makes it annoying to walk on and you could get stuck easily. Also, the heavy build in combination with the healing beam is bullet spongy as hell, and I am not a fan of that. Overall, I think the finals is a very fun game. It definitely steals a few things from Overwatch, but I think the amount of unique stuff that it has is enough to absolve it of that crime. The maps are unique and interesting. Not having a secondary gun is kind of annoying though, especially after dumping an entire assault rifle magazine into a heavy build to just leave them with a little bit of life left. Could be a skill issue, but it's still annoying. The competitive feeling is there. It's free, so that's always good. The sheer amount of customization and combinations you have with build options is great and can make for some very interesting gameplay. On our patented 0 to 1 scale, we rate this game a 0.74 out of 1, mostly because the building destruction mechanic is so integral to the game, yet it's not polished and moving through it can feel glitchy and getting stuck sucks. Also not having a secondary to switch to to finish someone off is kinda lame considering it takes a lot of bullets to kill someone. If you enjoyed this no bullshit review of the finals, please get stuck in some building debris and press the like button so our helicopter can find you. Comment a haiku about your morning and slap the ever loving shit out of the sub button. Thank you, good night, and don't forget to check all ventilation exhaust ports outside your home during these snowy months.